Plastic, the podcast for the miniature enthusiast. Enthusiasm is our forte. It is. We're some might say the most enthusiastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think our wives said that when yeah. we were out to dinner. Yeah, yeah. They're they like, s- You guys are so good at what you do, we love you. Yeah. Those were <laughs> the exact words. In my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just said you guys are way more enthusiastic than most. Oh yeah, they actually said that. They okay. I thought that. we were being sarcastic right now. Um, we, I mean, we were, they didn't say we were the best. <laughs> <laughs> they never would say that. No, no, no. they would say the opposite. Often <laughs> than that. Yeah. You got some stories you want to tell? I, I do have, well, uh, kind of. So last, or was it last episode or two episodes ago? I remember right before Christmas, mm-hmm. we had a Christmas list. Yes. Topic discussion. Right? Yeah, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I never, yes. I never so now I'm, I'm just going to ride this, this train mm-hmm. through to a uh, hobby new year's resolutions. Okay. So I think it's important like all new year's resolutions that we come up with hobby ones and then we break them. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I I'm going to challenge you to come up with one or two right now. Yeah. Right now <laughs> I can share mine because I already thought of this. Okay. Yes, you go. I haven't given us any thought. Okay. You don't listen at all to what I'm about to say. You just think about what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into this in the, in the what you've painted segment, but I need to get back on the paint every day horse. Wait, that, what happened? You set that up like two I, months ago. I know. You? I set it up and I was doing really well. There's probably spruids and spruettes who are crushing you right now. I know. I'm sure there are. <laughs> I, there are people on the Facebook page that are like week three, like day 26. I'm Seriously? Like, Jeez. That's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of, there's a Facebook page for the Trapped Under Plastic uh, podcast listeners, the spruids and spruettes. If you want to check it out, it's in the show notes. Yeah. And that's growing by the day. Yeah. Yeah. We're up to like 1,400 people already. So John made it a private Facebook group, which means that me and him have to approve every single person who wants to come in. Was there a particular reason for that? Because I don't trust people. Yeah. But I just, I, whenever I go in, I just hit approve all. I, I don't even look. You don't look? <laughs> am I supposed to look? You're supposed to kind of look. Okay. What am I looking for? You're looking for the date that their their account was created. Oh, looking for scammers and spammers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I'm generally looking for okay. is if your account was created in the last like month and you have zero to three friends. Mm-hmm. And like your name is like help Jeff. <laughs> no, it's usually like four names and they're mostly vowels. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and so I'm just like, ah, that said, I think I only have had to get two. I've only had to de- deny two. Okay. And I think you could still like shoot a message to me, even if you're not my friend that is like, hey, I'm a real person. So if, if by any chance you listen to this and I deny <laughs> your thing, I'm sorry, send me a <laughs> message and, and say, I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll get you in. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good talking on there. And some of the stuff are people giving their updates. So there's a little bit of account- accountability. And I have fallen off that wagon a bit uh, for, I would say, noble reasons. So um, this ties into my second New Year's resolution noble in addition to painting reasons. every day is to finish my stinking studio space. Okay. And that isn't taking up so much of my time. But you're making constant progress. Yes. Which is great. Yes, I'm I'm working hours every day or every evening typically towards that. So okay. it's like I'm not painting, but I'm I'm doing stuff that's needed to get there. Cool. Um, and then my third and final New Year's resolution is to learn how to edit videos, <laughs> <laughs> which is the scariest of the three. See, these are good resolutions because I think there are things that you know you're going to do. Mm-hmm. It's like. This isn't to diminish yours at all, but it's like a a resolution to like, I don't know, like eat once a day. It's like that. That's a thing I'm always going to do or like make a video once a week. I'm already doing that. Why not keep doing that? But it's like, it's a good resolution because you'll keep it. And that's important to make promises to yourself that you can keep and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Resolutions. um, You know, I'm always jealous of people that are like actual display miniature painters that have like a cabinet of like. 20 to 30 display miniatures they painted. You yeah. Know? I haven't painted that many in my life. I haven't mm-hmm. painted more than 10. Mm-hmm. I've painted maybe seven. Mm-hmm. So I think it'd be cool to make a New Year's resolution to paint at least three display miniatures this year, which is more than I've ever done in a year, which it sounds like a small amount, but like I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'll paint one a month because I'm never going to do that. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah let's say paint three display miniatures and that's not like painting a gaming miniature for a video that i'll ne that that's like i'll never use again this is like you know a nice display base and a cool uh paint job that i put a lot of effort into so yeah something that makes it in the top shelf of the cabinet yeah yeah the top, top shelf top shelf i gotta get one of those things you know that ikea glass shelf that everyone gets it's called the debt hoff the yeah. De delt hoff what is it called De delt hoff debt i don't know something like that meatballs they have a lot what <laughs> they have a lot of glass display cases that ikea pick from though yeah that one's kind of the the go-to mm -hmm. and it's cheaper Vinci V, if you ever see in his videos, like his 80. background, he's all these other ones in there, but they can get quite expensive. Yeah. His, I mean, his are really nice. Might be a good thing to go to a consignment store for. A lot of like glass display cases, like old yeah. ones from like, antiquity. Yeah. It's kind of cool. And those you find all the time because people are like, what the F do I use this for? It's yeah, grandma's. My, my China that yeah. I don't have anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, you would probably have to do some, some work with lighting in there because usually they're not as like open mm -hmm. to all angles there's a lot of like heavy wood so yeah. you can't see as well in there might need to paint it white so it gets some more balanced lighting going on maybe or that might be a disgrace to the wood it depends on what kind of person you are right just yeah. line it with tinfoil <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> well, you said no bouncing good. light <laughs> i have some news as well there is a uh, a paint and take for kdm happening at the source Hobby and Games in Roseville, Minnesota on February 9th. Not a sponsor, but I'm going to be doing uh, a meet and greet there as well. Not really a meet and greet, but just a, a painting hangout. Um, I did one uh, before in December, and I don't know, maybe like 15 people showed up and we had a lot of fun. And so we'll be doing it again on February 9th, which is a Sunday from 4 to seven is when I'll be there, but earlier in the day there is a KDM paint and take, which means free KDM models to go and paint and take. So what's KDM? Suggest. Oh, Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, Kingdom Death. Yes. Yeah, so if you know what that range is, and or you're interested in uh, maybe putting them together and trying to slap some paint onto them in a, like a, a stress-free zone because you didn't pay for the model, yeah, uh, and that's the kind of you know you're, you're scared of ruining something that's expensive. This is the perfect opportunity for you. And also, I'll be there late in the day, uh, and maybe I'll bring a KDM model that I own or just paint whatever. It doesn't really matter. Oh, you're not gonna get one of the paint and takes and then just paint that one? I could do that, um, or I could paint something that. Maybe I'm painting at the time or, or whatever it is. Dan, the manager, didn't didn't say that I had to paint a KDM thing. Dan, the man. Dan, the man. A jer. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um. Okay. John, are you so, going to be there? Uh. No. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know who else is going to be there? Not you. Me. <laughs> are you going to be there? <laughs> yeah, I put it on my calendar last night. That Seriously? It, yeah, that makes That's it real. That's awesome. Makes last it real. Time, last time uh, we did this... Um, people were like, is John going to come? And I was like, oh, no, he's not going to come because, you know, it's, you live like a kind of a far away. So it's a commitment for but just an evening. Yeah, painting. It, but it's a Sunday. We didn't have anything on the fam calendar already. The fam cal. The fam cal. Uh, you know, so we're going to we're gonna rock it out. And okay. I want to paint. I've never painted a KDM model, and so I might as well screw it up in public. Okay. Well, if you want to, I mean, I guess you could be there for longer um, than just four to seven. But that that's that's the approval that I got from the wife. Oh, that's your block. Yeah, that's my block. <laughs> if I show up at your house at like three, though, that's and fine. be like Amber, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I'm just gonna say Amber <laughs> until you let us leave. That usually works. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. All right. Any All right. other extra stories? Um. Shoot, let me consult the book of armaments. Um, consult. Oh, yeah. Uh, somebody had a birthday. That somebody's you. Oh, yes. Uh, today's the 8th. When this one we're recording it. Yep. Um, my birthday was the 6th. Yeah. We got steak dinner. Oh, man. I was full. Yeah. Till like 3 p.m. on the next day. I'm usually disappointed whenever I get steak from a restaurant. Um not disappointed well maybe just like a little bit disappointed yeah i know that you feeling. Know? it's like i can make a decent steak at mm -hmm. home and it's like i always want it to be like you know maybe like 30 percent better than what i can even achieve and it's like seven percent better right but yeah but this was really good i enjoyed it and how much of that percent is just the quality of the cut of steak maybe right. they just gotta if i had this same cut of steak i think i could do it yeah. just as well because i can't I, I i'm relegated to choice or whatever it is usda choice yeah just the you know the peasant version yeah. in in the grocery store yeah um but it was really good yeah it was really good 
Um, but why is this being brought up? Why are you bringing this up? My voice is being brought up? No, no, no. Why are you bringing up my birthday? I just wanted to celebrate, you jerk. Oh, And say you. happy birthday. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. 28 years old. Yes. No longer a D- decade younger than Divided you. by two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are no longer... I mean, you're really never 10 years younger than me. That's how uh, numbers work. But the number itself is not 27, 37 Explain anymore. to me how numbers work. Um, so if you were born at a certain day and I was born at a certain day, regardless of the year, we will always be the exact same distance apart in age. Okay. So it's not in right. fact yeah. that I you are now less than a decade younger. Okay. You are always the same distance away. Right. Until thought- one of us dies <laughs> and <laughs> the stops other aging and the other one or, catches up or, or I happen to go and orbit the, the world at light speed or whatever it is where time is relative and I age slower than you. Then the distance between us gets bigger. You ever heard this? That doesn't make any damn sense. So you think oh, time is a constant, right? Uh, sure, sure, sure. But it isn't, especially when that is... The, I think there was an experiment that I learned about in physics in college where two twins you know, existed and one went and did some kind of orbital journey in space and aged slower than their other twin. It didn't change much in looks, but it was an interesting thing to, to think about. So their body is actually younger yeah like like less cells have died and yeah. been reborn and yeah wow i think i haven't actually fact checked this i remember i remember hearing about it in college okay <laughs> but yeah but the still the number would be relative <laughs> to earth where the one twin was still living so when they came back it's not like the the space twin yeah was now like he I'm was 26 you're 28 <laughs> yeah he wasn't like tracking it on his like his time relative watch to, to, to oh. figure out how old he was when he came back that's the thing we need we need this we need this warhammer 40k watch that oh tracks time relative to where you are with a little universe. with a little warhammer as the clock hand <laughs> yeah the yeah. hammer yeah which makes it really hard to read because yeah, the hammer blocks the whole thing <laughs> It's translucent. It's a translucent hammer. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Obviously, right. we have the space technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can make. We can make that. Um, so we went out to eat with the wives. Yep. Um, and typically, the wives, once they come together, they're like Voltron, and their powers combine <laughs> to just shut us down <laughs> at twice the speed. <laughs> and they're so nice to us to allow us to do this. Yeah. I want to put that, make that real clear. Yeah. Um, that they they are very forgiving, um, even with all of our faults as humans yeah. and men. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you hedging right now or something? Right. I just, I don't know if they listen. <laughs> uh, I love you, sweetie. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, it was good. It was a great conversation. Um, and I think that there are a lot of like, which is just makes me w- like, like think about things. I'm like, they think very similarly and they kind of take in the world very similarly and you and I are very similar and it's just kind of this weird, like bizarro world version Yeah. of, we should two- have a TV show or something. <laughs> <laughs> come on, knock on my door. <laughs> Jack got me a nice present. He got me uh, a book, actually one that I would probably say Ben Comets brought into miniature, miniature painting fame called Color and Theory by, I knew his name when you gave it to me, but I can't remember now. It's, uh, it's, right, it's right over there. James Gurney. James Gurney uh, of the uh, fantastical Gurney dinosaur world universe. Yeah, Dinotopia. Yes, that's what it's called. I read a portion of it uh, when I rented it a long time ago, but I didn't finish it, and it is better than any miniature painting book I've ever read um, in terms of just knowledge applicable to art and miniature painting. I'll have a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, I I think the fact that it is one of the most highly regarded um, books in traditional art, 2D oh, art. Oh, is it? It is. Okay. Yep. Um, says a lot to kind of the the depth of it besides just it applies to miniature painting. Yeah. Um, but as we know, the deeper you go down the rabbit hole in mini painting, the more you get in tune with um, the traditional art forms. Yeah. And Definitely. this color, this 
covers this book covers really everything that makes or breaks high level painting and there's great education in this book to kind of get you to even like just want to take my first step beyond just base coat shade highlight kind of thing mm -hmm. um and it explains it in a way that i think is fairly easy to digest which is not easy to do with art books and art theory yeah holy crap it sucks that was quite the review i know i'm not making anything james gurney <laughs> have you read a portion of it yeah i've read it all oh yeah yeah very cool do you own your own copy yes i do oh cool yeah of course i'm not going to give you something i don't already have <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, but I read it like um, a year ago or a year and a half ago, and I need to revisit it again because sometimes you spend more time in something, you put more hours into the hobby, and even if you got something before, you go back to it, and you're like, okay, it makes more sense now, yeah, or yeah. I can maybe apply it uh, in a more in-depth way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your so. perspective shifts a little bit. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand something in a different way. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's all our talk about stuff that has nothing to do with the episode. No, not at all. And but... This intro part of the podcast... How long are we at right now? ...just well, gets longer and longer. Yeah. Because we just talk about episode. whatever. <laughs> so, on to what we painted about. What we painted about? What did you paint about? I, I replayed it. Replayed it? I replaced the word <laughs> talked with paint. No, no. On what we painted, uh, recently I did a stream on the YouTubes, uh, which I didn't, I didn't like advertise until I just popped up in people's feeds. Uh, which is fun. It was at the end of the year. I finished all my videos. I wanted to have some fun. Um, and I needed to paint something for a Patreon group I have called the Sepulchral Guard, mm -hmm. which uh, operates in a different way than when it did when we first created it. Uh, the way that it works now is everyone in the group paints the same miniature and we all paint a portion of it month after month. And then we come back and we compare our, our results and we, we share notes and talk about maybe the, the, the difficulty of painting that particular part and what our idea was and how, uh, you know, how it's uh, coming to fruition, how our plan is uh, unfolding. Um, and so I needed to finish something for the following Saturday. This was on a Friday, I think. <laughs> um, and so I was painting it the day before. Um, and I was painting the Chronicler from Scale 75, which is the model that uh, we voted on to paint. Not my first choice, because it's like a robot kind of guy, and I, I, you know, I want some kind of humanity in it, but whatever. Um, and what I was going for, all I knew going in was that I wanted to use the color green in many ways. And so I busted out a bunch of different greens, a contrast green, a Scale 75 green, a Citadel green, green ink, all these different things and was mixing them into my palette in different ways um, and uh, seeing how many ways I could fit green into it. I even did it with the armor. I shaded the armor with, with greens and all the fabrics, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, I painted for like nine hours and everyone was like, you're still here? And I was like, this is a typical work day, you know? Yeah. Eight what you already were going to try to accomplish, you just flipped on the cami cam. Yep, exactly, <clears throat> exactly. Yep. Okay, I got questions. Yeah. All right. First one isn't a question, but now it makes more sense. Okay. I popped on that stream to heckle you. <laughs> and, oh God, I just farted. It smells so bad. <laughs> Come on, no. Didn't you go poopy? No, I didn't. I was gonna. <laughs> you might need to take a break here. Cut the commercial. <laughs> um, uh, and I popped on the stream and um you were painting that thing and i'm like this doesn't look like a scott mini no nope. it was the first thing in my head and I, I i quickly like you know maybe scott's a more three-dimensional character than i imagine and no, he not. does have a variety of interests and sides to him nope. as a complex human nope <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't it that's that's my first observation okay um my second one because i knew what your sepulchral guard group did before and i didn't know you made this change mm -hmm. um before it was it was you got kind of just worked and held everybody accountable where you all set a goal when you meet and then the next time you meet you work towards that goal and, and shared how far you got and what were your you know struggles your, yeah. and successes each individual goal yes. yeah but here everyone's painting the same thing right do you feel that there's more 
value and learning that happens because they can see and talk about the exact same experience that that you had yeah so the problem that i had with the previous thing was that to answer your question yes um the problem that i had with the first way we did it was everyone had their own thing and they're doing their own thing Mm -hmm. and people aren't necessarily interested in what other people are doing naturally right there are exceptions to that real people some people are um, so when it came to giving feedback to these people, I had to force people to do it. Uh, but one, because people are shy and they're not, maybe they don't feel like they are capable of giving feedback to things that, uh, like they perceive as better than what they can accomplish. Sure. Um, but two, because they're just not maybe that interested. And so basically it was like, everyone gets a turn talk about their own stuff. And now in this format, we're all painting the same thing. Everyone has a shared interest because we're all working toward uh, the same goal. Mm-hmm. Um, my dog's being a goofball right now. Um, but so that, that, that was my goal. And now what I think may be happening is since we voted on the miniature, not everyone got the model they wanted, right? I uh, didn't get the model I wanted, right? So it's like maybe I don't actually care as much about painting this thing as maybe the four other people that did vote on it do. Sure. Um, so, you know, it's tricky. I think there, you have some pretty high class people in your Patreon group. So yeah. I, 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 They're respect, serious painters. I respect their ideas and their opinions on what they want. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what they think were cool. I think it's a cool model. Would it have been the one I voted on? I don't know. I don't know the other ones, but uh, probably not. But I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> I wouldn't be upset about that. I think it's a cool model. Yeah. High quality. That's the big thing too. It's not like sure. they're all like, well, let's all paint a zombie from Zombicide. Like it's like, well, little flabby details and <laughs> stuff like that like we not, would get through that faster yeah which might be nice yeah the problem is that people are falling behind oh are they yeah what the h what's hard you know people is it just paint wasn't it just pants it was pants day uh there was boots day and then pants day and now it's staff day and now we're painting the staff before that it was display base day that was a hard one to get through yeah i yeah that's um, building and pe- are you doing it again? Yeah. Lord it's, Almighty. It's, I'm going to blame it on your dog, though. Okay. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I find base building, because this is a 75 millimeter model, right? Yeah. Scale, 75 millimeter scale. You know, moment. I didn't understand the name of scale 75 for a longer than normal amount of time. It reference referencing the scale of 75 millimeter, because I sell a lot of those models in that scale. Oh, I, did you not get that? I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe seventy percent of the audience just had a similar reaction to I what so. I had. I a long never time thought ago. of that. Yeah, but anyways, go on. Um, well, that's messed up because not all their crap is in seventy-five millimeter scale. It's not. But. And you also created the brand of your entire company to pigeonhole yourself, you dumbasses. Yeah, maybe it's just like a cool hobby. Term. Yeah, yeah. Termy term hobby time. Scale thirty-two. I'm mm-hmm. gonna make that company yeah. flush brush forty-four. <laughs> <laughs> flush brush. Right. I mean, it sounds like a pretty good paintbrush, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if I knew what a flush brush was, maybe. <laughs> oh, it's no bomb wick, but bomb wick. Bomb wick is one of the types of creature caster paintbrushes. Is this, did, did they inherit this from somebody else? I don't, or is this their own name? Oh, uh, I, it was probably from Slow Fuse because he's got the bomb related stuff. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. okay. Do, do you remember what you were going to say or did I totally derail you? I don't. Oh, uh, display bases, especially for a larger scale. I find it really hard to estimate how much time it's going to take me to design it, build it, move things around so it looks good with the model on there. And then actually paint that. Like that's a harder thing to estimate than I think painting pants. Yeah, probably. And so I, that's probably why folks struggled. And there's a more, there's an extra dimension of the creative process to it rather than just getting out your paint and your brush. It's more, it's more of an unfamiliar territory as well. Yeah, for most people, it is. So I get that. Now we're on staff day. They'll be all right. Yeah, staff day is easy. Okay, I like that idea of everyone painting the same thing. Um, and I, I think it will be, uh, more valuable, even if you don't love what you paint, which we're going to get into that topic later today. Yeah. Um, so that's what you painted. Yeah. So what I painted. Yes. 
Is that what we're doing right now? Yeah, now yeah. what I are we done talking about you? No, actually, we can just cut right to the uh, credits. <laughs> <laughs> um, as alluded to earlier, hold it, on, let me guess. Is it dragon related? It, it's it's a lack of dragon related. <laughs> Um, I got very far in the, uh, body of the dragon and then I holidays, new years and ramping up of really trying to, f- <laughs> she is playing with the ball upstairs. I gave her a different ball. It's equally as loud. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be. Is it a bowling ball? No. <laughs> well, let's go, let's go with it. We'll see what happens. Um, and and then I just have hit the next gear to really want to finish my uh, my hobby space, the finishing of my basement. Um, and so between painting and staining and polyurethaning, hey, hey, look at that! <laughs> um, finishing, I finished all the electrical. And I didn't electrocute myself. Good, good. Um, feels really good. I got all the doors in. Wow. Yeah, I got the carpet ordered. It's not in yet, but hopefully in the next week or two, they'll call me and say that's in. I have my cabinets picked out. I have the countertops picked out. So really, I'm hoping in the next two weeks, I can be done with that. Because in February, uh, I have two work trips that are both going to end up being about four days each. And then before I'll know it, It'll be March, and March is Adepticon at the end of March, but still. Oh, man. And it's like this. I wanted this dragon done by January 1st. If I get it done by February 1st, I'm going to consider it a victory. Uh... Okay. <laughs> hey, man, that's something. Um, but long-term, like high-level hobby goals, I feel like I, I was super productive the last two weeks. Just not getting the paint on the mini. Sure, right. The Depticon related, so I have, <laughs> I have a online service that's watching for rooms at uh, the Schomburg, and I got a text <gasps> that there are rooms. What? <clears throat> Please so tell I, me this is like I pause this... my video game because I've been playing a lot of video games lately. <laughs> pause. I was <laughs> like, Witcher, wait! <laughs> Immediately called, got some lady who was just really struggling with her computer. Oh no! And I was, you know, they always ask the question, "Are you here for an event?" So I'm like, "Yeah, I'm here for the Adepticon event." And they always struggle saying that word and knowing what the hell it is. But anyways, she was struggling with her computer, and she was like, "Just give us a call back. You'll get a different person who has a computer that's functioning." That's not an acceptable customer service response, <laughs> so lady. I, I hung up and I called back, and there were no rooms. Now, she said, "Are you a?" Basically a vendor. She was asking if I was, I was a vendor. Because apparently there might have been rooms if you were an, a vendor. Um, but I said, no, I'm not a vendor. Just lie. And so she said there were rooms available if you were going, I think it was Friday to Saturday or Thursday to fr- uh, Saturday. Like a subset of what we wanted, uh, but not for the whole enchilada. Not for the Thursday to the uh, Wednesday to Sunday. So mm. that was super sad i even checked online just to make sure and yeah it wasn't wasn't available i'd even do it well because like, who's staying like one night you jerks people that are there not for the con i just suppose, there normally i suppose who are these people like why do they even allow people people that just use the hotel normally they're just people why that why it, you have this giant event and your rooms are sold out like immediately don't allow other people in uh that's stupid. I don't know. There's probably some hotel manager who can give us a good reason in the comment section. Yeah. Hotel. Manager. Hospitality people. Yeah. Tell us this bullshit. Yeah. Sound off. Yeah. <laughs> and also tell us why this lady's computer didn't freaking work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would have made a difference. I think it was, I think my little alert system gave me an alert when there was a, like that subset available, but not the whole thing, which is stupid because I put in that alert that I wanted Wednesday to Sunday, but whatever next time say yes when they say are you a vendor okay yeah what are you selling good vibes <laughs> right we are we've got uh um, just bring like a handful of the the duchess with and be like technically i am vendoring out of my backpack yeah uh that counts yeah in my head okay i'll do that next time we'll give them a call Man, I, you got my hopes up. i know i got my own hopes up i w- remember when i messaged you on facebook and i was like hey what's that chat 
that we're in with Gubertown, I was going to be like, I got a room, bitches. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> wait, wait to text that to me before you confirmed you got a room. Yeah, but I had to tell you I got yeah, it. I just true. said, hey, what's the chat? True, 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 true. Speaking of, we're going to be rooming with freaking Gooby. Oh, Goobs. Brett. Yeah, we are going to break his I get spirit. to sleep in his bed. <laughs> yeah, Naked. You do. No. Well, I thought we were going to roll the D4 for sleeping arrangements. Fine. I don't want to sleep next you wanna, time. You want to make uh, Goob sleep with your friend? Josh? <laughs> that that would be the, the highlight of the whole trip because that would be awkward AF. <laughs> yeah, just those two? <laughs> I think they those two will hit it off. And Josh watches all his videos, so he was pretty excited to hear that Brent, oh, yeah. Brent was going to be coming so i think brent could hit it off with anybody yeah he's yeah. a likable dude he's gonna he hit it off with you he can't hang out with you too yeah he did yeah he came down to my house and we hung out we had cheeseburger we bonded we sat out on a park bench together <laughs> nice <laughs> it was kind of cold that's yeah it was cold but that's <laughs> that's not even a a lie we did sit on a park bench together just where nobody was around it was like a little kid's playground and two grown men <laughs> just walk down and sit on the park bench together. And there was this lady that came by in a stroller and, with a stroller, not in a stroller. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's pushing the stroller and she's in it. I'm just like, all right, we're the second weirdest thing in this park right now. <laughs> so she comes by. And first of all, it's cold as shit out. And I'm like looking at her. I'm like, you're a terrible mother. And she looks at us like, I'm not letting you anywhere near my child. <laughs> you're both silently judging each other. Right, right. We're, yeah. Uh, I should have asked her to toss a coin to her witcher. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> that series is not a good series. And that character who sings that song, I don't understand him, why he exists. He's the bard. He's just annoying. He's an annoying person. He's annoying to the witcher. Why does he keep him around? Why does he help him out? He, because he is the the comedic relief. Is he? That is that is the role he is supposed to play in, in like a, a traditional sense. Okay. So uh, uh, there's a lot of things in this book. Sorry, we're going to get into this a little bit now. There's a lot of there's a lot of aspects to the series, the book series that likes to follow um, an almost Shakespearean narrative of how stories are told. Okay. And one of them is that um, through the bard, the story is actually told, or the story actually uh, okay. is lived out. Sure. So through the books, um, how people end up learning about Geralt. And how he becomes so infamous is greatly tied to the bard in that it's tough to, to watch or notice in the series, but he his path crosses to and fro Geralt, because Geralt can't stand him either, and he like chews him away many times. And when he's away is when the Witcher's kind of uh, persona is born, because he tells all the tales. Sure. And that's why people turn to Geralt, or he is called upon instead of just wandering through and, hey, there's a chimera in the woods kind of thing. That also still happens. But they seek him out because of the bard's tale. And so he's supposed to be uh, super annoying because that is the catalyst for the author to separate them so the story can be told. Okay, it seems like there's always together. Right. The The timeline in the, in the TV show is so fucked up because they look the same. They often are wearing the same clothing. Other than the lady goes from hunchback to not hunchback, you don't really know how much time has passed. Yeah, like many years. Yes. Like tens of, if not hundreds of years. Yeah, well, not that long, but yes. Because she, she's like ancient. Yes. Anyways. Yes, anyways. Many so you're playing the game Witcher 3 now, so you're kind of getting some some of the stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's fun. Yeah, the game is so freaking good. Many related, there used to be a Geralt... Is it Geralt or Geralt? Who knows? There's, there used to be a Geralt miniature and a Siri miniature uh, sold by our pals at Scale 75 illegally. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, they sold them legally. They just didn't have the IP <laughs> to do so. They did not, and they are no longer available. Maybe if you find them on eBay, they're really good. They're solid solid models. Um, there is official ones. I don't know who makes them. Oh, really? I don't know. I know there's a Siri one. Because I saw someone like just a, recently on Instagram, and it's uh, like a statue. Yes, no, 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 it's. I think it's a bust. Oh, if my brain can remember, I think it's a bust. It's a waste up bust. <laughs> but it's an official one. I don't know who makes it though. Well, we'll find out. I see Project Red. Yeah, they probably do it themselves. Yeah, they're cause, badasses because they are making weird things for their cyberpunk game as well. They're like model related. I know, like Matthew Sexwish. 
mm-hmm. is doing, he's like hired by them to do painting. Oh, wow. But it's like for large stuff, not for small stuff. Like, that, like mm, real life size stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh. Real li- life size statues. Okay. Yeah. Topic for this video is submitted by a patron uh, who I believe is local to me in Wisconsin. Um, but we didn't, we weren't collecting names at that point. So I don't know who it was. But the question is, is what makes a miniature special to you? Like if you're just browsing the shops, your LGS and you see a box art, you're like, whoa, I want to paint that. How do you like, how do, how do we unpackage that feeling? How do we, you know, quantify it? What makes a model enticing? Why do you want to paint a certain thing? Oh, I thought the topic was what gets you excited to paint a I certain mean, model or a sure, miniature. Isn't it? I guess that's kind of the same thing. I don't know. I think that's kind of the same question. Okay. Maybe a little bit different. Maybe a little bit more nuanced. <clears throat> yeah. But I thought about it. I went on a little walk with the dogs before you drove here. Mm-hmm. Walking the dogs in negative two degree Fahrenheit. It is cold. Not enjoyable. Kind of where your jaw starts to get numb toward the end of the walk because you're not wearing a scarf. Because you're okay. a man. Yeah, but I don't like being a man. <laughs> I'd rather wear a scarf. <laughs> did you have able... earmuffs on too? I did, yeah. Earmuffs, hood, big old jacket. Did you good. wear a stocking hat? No. No stocking hat, right. yeah, just a hood. Jesus. Okay. Okay. All right, now that my mental picture is set, <laughs> you can go ahead with the with your walk story. So, I, yeah, I got deep. I got deep in my own brain. Well, there's a thing I've always said about picking out miniatures to paint. And that's when I'm walking and I see a thing and this is going to sound cliche, but it's totally true. If I can understand or think of the model's story immediately upon looking at it, then it's like, I want to paint this because when a model has a story, it's a lot easier to paint it for me because for me, the story informs so much of how I paint the model and what colors I use. Mm. So it's like, is this guy... Is he rough in it? Is he poor? Okay. If so, then I'm going to paint him in a certain way. Maybe like put more texture on his leathers and his cloth because they're they're used and worn, not because they're fresh and new. Uh, is he creepy and weird and, and, and a necromancer? Maybe I'll use greens because it's kind of a creepy color, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so for me, it's if I can glean a story, that's a good start. So it's a good start because it helps you make decisions easier Mm-hmm. instead of just keep hitting wall after wall of, well, I use blue here. Uh, I guess I can use purple here. Or yeah. it, it just makes the process easier and probably more enjoyable too, because you're, the story is unfolding in your head. Yeah. But yeah, that you mentioned the color thing that I dress is probably one of the most common problems that painters have is trying to figure mm-hmm. out what palettes use in their miniature. And that can help with that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, I had something in line with that as well. Uh, so when I'm looking at miniatures, because I pictured you standing in a store or, you know, browsing through yeah. a website and you're like, one steps out to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kind of reverse to that for me is if I have to convince myself it's a cool model, I should stop. Right. Because... I sit there and look at the box. It's a new model, right? So every time new model comes out and you're like, ooh, new models. Yeah. Let me go look at it. And yep. I have to look at it. And I'm like, this is a f- fucking weird looking Eldar. <laughs> it, people say it's cool though. Is it cool? Oh, I think it's supposed to be cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's cool. All right, I'll paint it. All right. No, don't yeah. ever do that. Yeah. Because if you're doing that for the sake of painting it, you're going to lose... Out. You're going to lose momentum yeah. at some point and yeah. you hate yourself. Yep. I agree. So you careful know, of that. Another thing that I thought about, and I think this is going to be an interesting thing to discuss. Um, sometimes what can be, what can be exciting about painting a miniature is the prospect of experimenting with something new to you. Mm. And part of what makes experimentation easier is painting a model that you don't necessarily care about mm-hmm. because then it's you don't care about the outcome. And so I have this thesis that I want to throw at you and I want you to see how you take it. Oh, wow. And that is that caring about your models is bad for you. Caring about your models is bad for you. So like everyone, they, they, they buy their favorite army from whatever game they play. Yeah. And they're super invested in the thing. And 
one of three things happens. 2% of people paint their whole army in the exact way they want to. Mm -hmm. 20% of people paint their whole army in the way they want to, but it takes them a decade. Yeah. (laughs) And the rest are paralyzed with decision paralysis and fear. Right. And never, never do it. Yeah. At all. Because if you start the first one (laughs) and you, you're, you're then locked into it. Yeah. In most games, the armies have an aesthetic and a kind of a, a flow that goes through them often with color. Right. Yeah. And so if you paint something, you are obliged to stick with that. Like you can't paint a unit of 10 space Marines and the first one is green and the second one is yellow and no. the third one is red. And like, ah, I just painted it, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you can, you yeah. certainly can. In yeah. fact, do that. Because fuck the man. Yeah. Or just buy like a $15 box of like those three little dudes Mm -hmm. uh, and just experiment with those three. Right. But yeah, there's that fear of even making a decision because you're locked in for life or whatever it is. Right. And I think that is a, that's a, I I think that's a pretty strong thesis. Um, But I think that it works mostly in the gaming realm. Don't love, yeah, don't love your model or don't get too close to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Because then you just create an unnecessary barrier. Okay. Um, I could see that you could do it for just painting for fun or trying to paint to a high standard too. If it's from like a, um, uh, just a sculpt you just love, 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 or it's a, you know, a specialty resin piece, you know, by whomever, you know, Michael Contreras or whomever that you just like, oh my gosh, it's great. And mm-hmm. It's not cheap. And it's such a cool sculpt school model. Sure. You just get too invested before you put a paintbrush in yeah. and then you just you can't do it right i don't want to screw it up you hear that practice. i'm not good enough yet yeah. to do this sculpt justice yeah you will always feel that way yeah right and more models will always come along the way that yes. make you feel in a very similar way yep so just paint this suck at it <laughs> yes and you'll be a little bit better in the next yeah. one right because you going through that process with that one will make you better for the next one that you fall in love with yeah and before you know it, five of them down their line, you'll find your true love yeah. and you'll knock it out of the park. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing about this is, so I say, I say caring about your models is, is bad for you. Obviously I'm just saying that to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to stir the pot. Sure. Um, but you know, there is the, there is the other side of this that I don't want people to go down, which is okay. I'll buy models that are terrible and then practice on them. And to a certain extent, that's okay. The thing for me where it crosses the line is when people are buying green army men. I don't get that at all. I don't. So there's a, okay. The reason I'm bringing this up and why it's fresh in my mind is because someone is particularly is, is doing that in my discord. And I'm like, I'm telling them just stop it. There are miles that are significantly better for a very fraction, like more in, in cost. Just buy those and get a more realistic experience about what it's like yes. to paint a model. Yeah. Um, so if you're listening to this, I do do not, I do not encourage you to paint plastic green army men. That is a waste of your time. Don't do it. That's, it's not a realistic experience of what painting when you get to the real miniatures, what it actually, how it works. Yeah. I mean, technically you prime it over, the paint's going to act the same way, I, mm-hmm. I, I assume, but it's just no lines. No, no, You can't practice, you know, doing black lining. You can't really practice doing edge highlighting because everything it's is just, a just, mushy mess. Yeah, it's just, it's mushy. And like, okay, if you're good at painting a green army man, you'll be amazing at painting a miniature because it's going to be so much about just interpreting what volumes are supposed to be there that mm-hmm. aren't actually there. Mm-hmm. So a good manager will actually help you out like where the model's cheekbones are and its chin and its brow and, and other, other anatomy, like it's, it's, it's pecs and other things like that. That's going to be just all just like gooped over on an army man. And you're just going to have to kind of guess where that stuff goes. And if you're new to painting, you're going to totally fail. It's going to be so frustrating. Yeah. And you're going to think you suck at painting. Well, it's not you. <laughs> it's the fact you bought a green army man, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like from a newcomer perspective or someone that's just trying to get better or trying to just dip their toe in the hobby, it seems like a good idea. Yeah. Though. It's like, okay. It's the whole painting spoons thing too. It's like, yeah. 
okay, I get it. I can want to paint spoons with my airbrush to kind of practice what a color might look like so that I can get an idea of what it might look like on a, on a rhino or a tank or something like that. I get it, but that just makes me roll my eyes in the back of my head <laughs> so hard. <laughs> <laughs> we assume that, and I think you spend a good amount of time painting and you quickly realize that this is a falsity, is that we assume that we have an infinite amount of time between today and the rest of our lives to paint Preach. all the things that we'll ever want. Preach, yes. And when in fact, so I can take all this time and do baby steps mm -hmm. and just learn it on something that doesn't matter because I'll be able to get to those seven yeah, rhinos for my, my army. Get my gear together. Yeah. I'll do all this hobby adjacent activities. Yeah. Because once I hit that ground running, man, I'm going to be painting so many things. I'm not going to have any place to put them. Yeah. That is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I really want to challenge you if you're listening to this right now. And that, that sounds like we're describing you. We're not trying to make you feel like a bad person, but we're trying to get you to not go down the road that it, I think a fair number of people go down where it's just, I need to have everything totally locked in before I can even start painting models that I care about. And it's just, just what it, whatever you got, just start painting models you care about and you'll eventually get there because time is not infinite. It is finite. Mm -hmm. And you'll just, I don't know, you'll just get lost in the details. Yeah. And you assume that all the things that you want to paint and, you know, all the things for an army or all the th models that excite you that just like we talked about before, they will continue to, to come to, out. To come out. Yeah, GW has proven that. Yeah. They can make interesting models for a long time. <laughs> yes. And they're only going to get better. <laughs> yeah. And soon you'll be able to print them all to your heart's desire on your own <laughs> resin 3D printer at home. Yeah. And so that is not the issue, is is lack of, of getting them good models to paint. Yeah. The issue is the time that it takes to put in on actually painting to get better. Right. So bringing us back to what we were talking about. So the, the, the prospect of learning something new is a reason why a model could be exciting to paint. And that model doesn't even need to necessarily be one that I care about. It can be a crappy model from a board game that I'm just testing a color scheme on or an idea. For instance, I, 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 I painted some dudes from the others. There are like the uh, doctors who are kind of growing tentacles and like getting becoming monsters a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to make them look sickly. So I'm going to highlight their skin, uh, progressively mixing in more and more electric green. I mean, it's kind of like a lime green. Mm -hmm. Instead of like going that typical uh, red route, I'm going to mix in greens to make them look sickly. And I experimented that on a model that was very low pressure. And I found out that, hey, this does work. Now I can translate this to a larger model that I care about. So that was kind of a fun thing to do with a model that was not so pretty. Um, any other things that inspire you to, to paint models? Oh, yeah. I got some more. Okay, let's okay. hear it. So one of the things that inspires me to paint a model, and this is more from a, I guess, a gaming side, um, regardless of the game, is I know that I'm going to get to use it a lot. Mm -hmm. I know that it's going to be on the table a lot. It's a unit. If I'm playing a, a game like Age of Sigmar, I use this guy all the time in the army. Okay. I know that he'll get a lot of a lot of showtime, okay. right? So I feel like the if it's going to be used more, I feel like it's a better use of my time investment to paint him. Um also this is the reason why I really enjoy painting our player characters for our D&D group. Because every time we play, that dude's on the table the whole time. And it, my buddies that are on the table or if I paint their models, they're like, yeah, we are, our whole team is painted together and they like how they look and I how they like, like how they look. And we use them for a lot of hours. Same thing with, you know, with skirmish games or with full army games. If it's a model, I know it's going to use a lot. It just entices me to paint him first. As opposed to, I got a unit of uh, 40 skeletons. Those things are going to die under a stiff wind. Oh, and okay. I'm going to be pulling them off. It's like, I don't matter that I painted this one because it's going to go throw in my box of dead skeletons okay. until the game's over. Interesting. So it's not even that you necessarily get to use it frequently. It's how long it even gets to stay on the table. Yeah, table time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. This seems like this is at odds with uh, painting things you actually care about because – the competitive gamer and a lot of you guys are probably really interested in min-maxing your lists where yeah. it's like, I want the things that are perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas maybe I like a certain model from a certain range and it's not like uh, the the coolest or, or most tactically useful thing. So I'm not going to paint that. Mm-hmm. But I have to paint this thing that I kind of don't care about a whole lot because it's, it's useful. Um, is that, do you feel like, do you feel like that that's at odds with each other a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. It's very, that's one of the, the biggest struggles I think of getting through the just breaking down and starting to paint your big army Okay, is that so many of them, you need to have a lot of models and a lot of them are just dudes. Right. And so, but there's so many of them, right. If I got to paint 30 space Marines and then this one sweet ass Primaris captain, the sweet ass Primaris captain excites me a lot more yeah. than the 30 random dudes. Yeah. Um, and so most times, especially, I mean, hint, hint, these game designers, uh, make games that require you to buy more models and have lots of them. There's very few armies in most games that it's like, it's four models <laughs> or five models. And that's right. Well, there are such things, but they're suck balls and you're going <laughs> to lose. And games have, have sy- game systems have set up where you have to have so many battle line or infantry right. or whatever yeah. in your army. Yeah. It's like, bitch, this is the far future. <laughs> I can bring whatever the hell I want to an army <laughs> a battle. Who cares? It's not like the generals meet up before and it's like, uh, excuse me, Terminate or Tyranid Lord. Let's make sure we are on even playing field and we both bring the same amount of little grunty dudes in order for us to have a fair battle. Tyranids don't give a shit. No. They are going to eat your brains and lay eggs With in your butthole. With as many aliens as they want. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> And lay eggs in your butthole. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's, that's, that's silly. That's silliness. Don't make us buy all those dudes because that is the problem is it's like all the mass amount of little dudes. Yeah. The hordes. Yep. And that's why I just paint a and d character. It's sweet. Yeah. Have you painted your whole party's D&D characters or a few of them at least? Um, all right. So we're just starting a new campaign. We just built char- new characters uh, last Sunday. Fresh. Yes. But prior to that, we had a longstanding one that that Josh is running. Josh that comes with us at Adepticon. He's our DM for that one. And it is a Thieves Guild campaign. And I have painted our entire parties group. Have I? Have you any pictures of these? Uh, the Probably not. No, I should probably put those out somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought... Uh, for my character, because my character is kind of a diplomat, I usually play the talky talk, you know, the <laughs> the guy that likes to be the face okay. of the party. Yeah. And so I bought... I can see that. Um, I bought a, the ripoff uh, Assassin's Creed. I can't remember who makes it. I, I don't think it was ripoff, actually. I think it was legitimately licensed. Oh, really? We said it was ripoff, and then I think a few people were like, actually, it's actually... Oh, good. well, that's good then. Uh, and, uh, Angel Heraldes painted it, right? Yes, I think so. Angel uh, or, no, this is a different one. Oh, this is, is a resin one. This is not the new one. This is oh, an older one. Maybe it's ripoff. Though. By uh, I I think I had to I had to buy it through uh, what is that, Mister? Uh, Mister Whatever's Hobbies. Shoot, it's the the place where you can buy all the different uh ranges that are more like boutique ranges. Is this Galapagos Miniatures? That sound familiar? Mm, that's not what I'm thinking of. But it's it's a conglomerate of different brands. It's a it's a one place. Is where it from you, France? Is it French? It's I don't remember. It's Mister Something or it's a dude's name. Is it is it, is his logo a beaver? No. Okay. Never mind. I just I, I can't believe I can't think of it. Okay. But anyway, um, so yeah, it was it's from a small range, mm-hmm. um, and so I painted that, and that was in resin. He's got he has the option of a tiny little rapier in resin mm. or the same hand can have a push dagger. So his hand is out and the push daggers coming nice. out. I'm like, I'm picking that. Cause that rapier is going to get snapped yeah. the first game we play. <laughs> um, I converted my buddies. Um, he's playing a, uh, lizard man, a uh, druid. And I converted a mini from massive darkness cause they have really good lizard people sculpts. Okay. And so, yeah, that I enjoy doing that. Cool. I um, think that makes sense. I've only painted three characters for my D and D group, and there's a few more to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that 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 makes sense. Um, another reason why I so I I wanted to think about so I, I often call myself a hipster. I do have a tendency to like things that are not popular. Mm. When I was 
growing up, actually a huge reason why I was into the music that I was into is because it, people didn't like it, you know, it's even a little bit of misanthropic, you know, a little bit of just, actually it's wonderful. And here's why I actually didn't like Led Zeppelin queen and ACDC for the longest time, just because everyone liked them. Mm. And how stupid am I? I grew up and I started listening to queen and I'm like, this man is amazing. Yeah. Um, so that was stupid, but I've always kind of been like this. So I think because of that, I have a tendency to like bad guys because mm. bad guys are kind of, they're kind of less liked. They're not, they're not supposed to be liked. So I, of course, like them yeah. to, you know, stick to the man. Right. Um, so I think I, that's a pretty common feeling, at least, that around common? Ba- at least around bad guys. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, I guess what you call pop culture based hero and villains where the villain is is more well known or more well liked right than the hero that makes sense so yeah i think when it comes to things that i'm excited to, to paint it's obviously things that are in my wheelhouse that i i i enjoy uh um like from a, a lore perspective or an aesthetic perspective so evil things uh vampires wraiths banshees liches um all that stuff um and then the obvious what else speaking of there is a new what up that just came out for the what Elf blood bowl team made by forge world and it is is that the lady with the braids that are like i dig that model ditch the ball give it a weapon of some kind and she has this jovial expression and like the model just looks like it's fun to paint you probably don't like it that's fine i didn't look at it closely i just saw the ridiculous hair yeah the braid is long uh but she it's just, like as thick as her torso. Her face looks so, like it's so much fun to paint. Um, okay. And I just, I, I want to, I want to get, do a little conversion, a little conversion oh, yeah. version and, oh, yeah. and give it a paint. Um, looks awesome. But yeah, so things that I'm interested in outside of the hobby, obviously are going to influence what I'm excited to paint in the hobby. Uh, and that is one of them. But you like evil things. Yeah. Do you find yourself gravitating towards stuff that isn't popular just for the sake of that as well? Uh, or do you like evil things for a different reason? I don't think it's because I, I guess I've never really thought about it that way because other people don't like it. Um, but I, I, I'd say in my teen years, I had a very similar approach to you is that I purposefully did things or acted a certain way or, you know, movies and music and right. TV yeah. that I, I wa- was, I, purposefully separated from mainstream. Yeah. And I think that's fairly common in, in angsty youth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but SpongeBob, that was sacred. Right. Okay. Even though that was mainstream, I was on that. SpongeBob was hilarious. Still is. Okay. I was in an ice cream parlor and it was playing. That show is insane. Yeah. I, it made me want to rewatch it again. Oh, you can. But yeah, I was watching and I was like, I, this, I don't understand it like was like blowing my mind as a 28 year old male. And I was like, how do I handle this as a, like a 10 year old? I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. I, I find myself as a father, like watching when I'm watching something with my daughter to like watch <laughs> it through my own eyes and watch it through hers. It's really weird wow, yeah. when that's you kinda... try to think about how they're that sounds experiencing hard. something. And then you're like, cause in a lot of like Disney movies and Pixar movies and all that kind of stuff, there's a lot of more like, adult themes or jokes yeah. or just nuancy things that we get that they don't get. So it still has to work for both audiences. It's messed up. It sounds like it's very difficult for the creators to do. I don't, I would, it sounds like it. I think it would be, but I don't know. <laughs> Satan runs Disney. So he's got it all figured out. <laughs> uh, well, Disney is a lich that will never die. <laughs> he's in the back room. I've always thought the D and Disney it was a G. It's a G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that normal? Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's like a backward. But then it's weird. You thought it was a G, but you don't even realize that would if it was a G, it'd be a backwards. It'd be backwards. G. Yeah, but backwards you still don't G or something like that. But you still don't recognize that. You're right. Just like oh, that's a, it's, yeah. I think it's Gizney. It's Gizney. <laughs> I thought that for forever too, and I never realized that other people might. Because I'm not going to tell anybody that. <laughs> no, I know. Until like I don't know, what was it five, ten years ago? And I was like. <gasps> everybody on the internet thinks the same thing. You know something stupid that I realized recently too? The genre of music, pop. Did I already tell this to you? I think I already told this to you. Okay, pop music. The word pop 
is short for popular. Yeah. And the music isn't necessarily a genre because it's similar to other songs. No. Like you have Taylor Swift, who is an incredible pop icon, and then a more recent one, Billie Eilish. They make incredibly different types of music. Yeah. But they're both pop music. Yeah. And I didn't know that that was a genre simply because of the merit of how uh, mainstream it is. Yeah, it can't be defined. It's I believe it's probably the only genre of music that can't be defined musically. Like I can't describe to you. Just like in, you could describe what makes a country song. Yeah. That it meets three of these seven criteria would make it a country song. Yeah. You can't say that for pop. And in theory, pop could be, something could be a pop song and it could be a categorized as R and B. Sure. So it's or it's like electronic stupid. or something like that. It, it's you know, it's stupid that it's not it's it's solely set there to make money. That's what it comes down to. Interesting. I think there probably is music that could be described as poppy. Um Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I didn't I did not know that until I don't know, like maybe like two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're we're discovering a lot of things. We are discovering right now. things about ourselves. The D is a G in Disney. About Pop life. music is popular, etc. Do you have uh, any other things that inspire you to paint models? I do. I got two parts to this. The first one is going to be the the two flip part. side. the The flip side of what makes me uninspired to paint something. Okay, that's a good way to start. Let's say it's even something that I really like. This happens to me quite a bit. It's a model I really like. It's a really cool model. I think, oh, it's super awesome. But if somebody that's really good has painted it. Don't tell me this. Come on. And they put it out on Instagram or whatever. And you're like, oh my God, that is the most freaking amazing looking whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to paint that. Really? Here's a great example of this. Uh, was it two years ago when Michael Pasarski painted the, um, the four horsemen diorama for crystal brush? Yeah. And he won with that, didn't he? Um, Maybe he didn't. I don't... Well, he won one year. I can't remember if it was with that or something else. But... Anyway. But I think I, I think he did. About. I'm pretty sure he did win that that year. Um, and that, that diorama was uh, sculpted by Michael Contreros mm -hmm. and not revealed until after the competition of course so he had the super super wow factor yes and later on michael Contreras released that that either as a full diorama you could buy it because it's the four horsemen and they're like running over this deadish ground right and you could buy all four you could buy all four or you could buy them individually just buy a single horseman and there was like two of the four that i thought were pretty badass but he painted them at such a high level. They look so freaking awesome that I'm like, they get knocked down three pegs for me, even though I like them, the models, and I'm excited to paint them because I just, I feel from the get go, I am always comparing myself to what he's done. And I, it just, it doesn't do it for me at that point. I got enough hurdles I got to get through to paint something good. I think that's a feeling that a lot of people relate to. <laughs> just lowered your chair three inches. Oh, yeah. It's just so I can fit the table better. Okay. Um, I think that's definitely relatable. It's not for me because I, maybe I, my ego is even bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm trolling Ikea, you know, I can build that. I don't need to buy it. I can build that. When it comes to painting, I can paint better than that. I don't actually think I can paint better than <laughs> Michael Pasarski, but like... Maybe my ego is so large that I just don't even care that someone else painted it better. Um, but that has never been something that I relate to. I will paint anything because I like it. doesn't matter who painted it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We I got found, another one. We, we found something we're different about. So, yeah. I, th I I think that there are... Now there's like two things that we're different about. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, going back to music. Yeah. I, I think that there is... I, I defined something in my head one time, and I don't know if... I ever share it with anybody in the world, so I'll share it with you now. And the internet. And the internet. Um, <laughs> so I have this thing where I can, and there are certain bands that I can appreciate their music and I think that their music's good and I have listened to their songs, but 
if their song ever came on the radio, I will always change the station or I will always hit next on Pandora. I just will always do it. Which band? Aerosmith is one. Okay. I respect Aerosmith. I don't dislike Aerosmith. I can never listen to one of their songs. Yeah. I've heard them all, so it's not like I'm just like, oh, I'm just not even going to listen to it. I right. just don't like them. Um, nine times out of ten, Led Zeppelin is that for me as well. Okay. Um, Pink Floyd is one. Rolling Stones are one. It's just all these mainstream rockers. Yeah, just like <laughs> well-known. And they're good music. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd share that, that when you're saying like, I just didn't like these things, sometimes you can be like, they're good. Like when you learn, you know, listen to Queen, you're like, you're good. Yeah. But that's okay to acknowledge something that it's like, it's good. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I want to listen it. to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just, I get, got this like point at one point. Oh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers is another one. I can never listen to Tom Petty. <laughs> I, I, I was just like driving down the road one day and I was just, <laughs> I, I can't remember. It was either Tom Petty or Aerosmith came out and I realized, I think I have changed the station every time Aerosmith has come on for the last 10 years. I think this means something. I never want to listen to their music. Right. I, don't I get hate that. them. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah. They're not Nickelback. I don't seek out any of those like classic rock groups either. I don't like classic rock a whole lot, but I will make an exception for Queen. I do like Queen a lot. Yeah. Um, was that related? No, it was, it was a little... Because it kind of is. It kind of. Because there are brands that you can acknowledge that make quality models Yeah. that you just never want to paint. Yeah. I think uh, and there's tons of display miniature brands that that do that. I mean, Games Workshop does that all the time. Yeah. They make, I mean, like the whole every single thing they make pretty much is high quality. But yeah. I'm not interested in painting 98 percent of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it com- I think that a lot comes down to the timing thing again. Like I have so many models in my lifetime that I can paint mm-hmm. before I die. Yeah, okay? I don't know what that number is. It's less than a thousand, probably. Does this make the cut? Uh, I don't think it makes the cut. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's kind of an interesting way to look at it, right? Yeah, you only have so Are many you top one thousand material. Only, you only have so many bullets in your chamber, and you that number is going to continue to grow as every day that goes by and new models come out. Mm-hmm. So you can't make your list of a thousand now. Paint before I die, because two years from now there's going to be another fifty that you'd add to that list. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, something that get, excites me, and this kind of goes along with your the story thing, okay. but an idea that I have that would make it unique. And conversions um, fall into this, okay. but sometimes it's a paint scheme. Sometimes it's an idea of environment. Sometimes it's story related. Um, a great yeah. example I have of this is there is the a Wolverine bust. And last year, Eric Swinson had an idea that Wolverine was shirtless and he was just regenerating from bullet wounds bullet to wounds. his chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the red hot metal and his regenerative properties are showing there. Minor conversion of just drilling in a little, hole. little holes yeah. across him. Yes. And he was shirtless. Yes. But that idea, I'm guessing, was probably very early on or maybe the first reason why he decided to do that piece because that was unique that was cool that would stand out yeah. if you could pull it off well and obviously yeah. he did yes he probably spent 40 hours painting little man chest hairs <laughs> <laughs> um another that's a great thing and i totally agree with that um and it can be as simple as a paint scheme like for instance uh i'm waiting for someone to paint the vampire the duchess with normal human skin tone, like warm and rosy cheeks and blonde hair. Um, Mm. Like a summer like version of the Duchess, but even just a paint scheme when everyone seems to be going down a path and you, you divert in a different way uh, that, that can be even an exciting reason to paint something like that. Mm -hmm. That's what you typically make something stand out as different. Not that just it was well painted, but something you didn't expect. Yeah. Or, Okay. Another great example of this. There's a model by Black Sun Miniatures, which typically does Barbarians. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with this British brand. They have a model that I painted uh, 
her name is Tally. She's got a side shave and she's got like yeah. a sword. Someone took that. I think I showed this to you. Someone took that sword, cut it off, and gave her a lightsaber and made her a Sith Lord. And oh. gave her gave her sweet like tribal like. Uh, like I don't know what they call like face tattoos or whatever. Um, and it it, it worked so freaking well with just the katana gone and, a, and a, a red lightsaber in its place. Uh, just like that kind of thing. It's like oh, he spotted that and he knew that would work immediately. And he's the only one to figure that out. And it, and, it, it, and it clicked for everyone. It's so cool. I I love that idea. But yeah, that's a great thing to that I had to think about. That's yeah. great. Okay, I have one more final one. Okay, cool. And that is the, this goes back to the ego thing. Okay. I will be excited to paint something if I know a lot of people are going to see it. Mm. So I will be excited to paint my dragon because I know it'll be at Adepticon in the case. Okay. And if it's going to get a lot of views and it's going to get likes and it's going to be something where people are like, oh, wow, that will excite me to paint it. At that point, it kind of doesn't matter what the model is. That's not the factor that I use when I decide what to paint. Okay. But it's more often than not, that's how I get my way through to continue to want to paint something for, um, for a competition level. When you got to put so many hours in, you got to come up with your reason why you're going to continue to go back to the table and keep at that one mini. And, for me, if I'm perfectly honest, is because I want people to be like, "Wow, it's so good!" Because a lot of people are going to see it. Yeah, um, it's interesting that you mentioned that. How many people do you think see your dragon at the convention? In person? In person? Yeah, like a thousand, two thousand. Yeah, so we're in there, probably like seventy. And now I'm just gonna like fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like whatever. That's a fine reason. That's a fine reason. But I think when you start making YouTube videos and you're racking. 20, 30, 50, 100,000 views, that becomes not a motivation anymore. Oh, sure. People will see your stuff. But maybe there's a difference between online views and in-person views. Like you can distinguish between that because it seems like online views might have less value despite it being the almost the exact same thing. Um, but like in person, someone can like talk to you and tell you how much they liked it and stuff like that. Um, but that's not something that I thought about a whole lot. Part of it to me too is, especially at Adepticon, the sheer amount of good to amazing painters that are there and that are, mm. that are seeing my work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, you know, the big names walk by and see it and they're like, wow, that one's really good. Like to okay, me, that counts for like 50 views. They'll invite you into the club. Yeah, there's a club, and I don't, I don't have a card yet. Yeah, you got to the, the, the secret club. <laughs> you don't have a card. <laughs> You're trying to get into, like, the Phoenix Club at, like, Harvard or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to recite the, like, the lines from uh, <laughs> whatever backwards. I'm trying to think of that movie with Robin Williams. Uh, Dead Poet Society. You have, okay. to, you have to recite the entire monologue from Dead so Poet Society backwards. Backwards. To the in the third stall of the men's bathroom after flushing twice. Yeah. And yeah. then the whole thing goes, brrr, yeah, and it yeah. opens. At 1.23 a.m. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going down to that bathroom. That's kind of 1.23 a.m. This is like <laughs> the Chamber of Secrets or something like that. <laughs> I wish. How great would that be? That'd be bad. I don't want to go fight a big basilisk. Yeah. <laughs> what if there was a Chamber of Secrets in the Schomburg Convention Center? <laughs> Again, I don't want to unleash some giant monsters. It's bad. <laughs> oh, man. I could just see us just being hammered at 3 a.m. and running down the hallway being like, come on, join us to the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Trying to find the secret bathroom. <laughs> you guys you guys know where the secret bathroom is to get the Chamber of Secrets? Where's that crying ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Moaning myrtles down there. Don't go there. Oh, man. All right. All right. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think that just I at the base level, what I'm saying there is something that you're going to take pride in with others view it, yep. especially in person. I I'm just not to the point where I feel like the quality of my miniature photography shows what I want it to show, how good it is in person. And so I feel like if a lot of people, especially a lot of, you know, renowned painters see it in person, that that's what I really pushes me sure so. i agree 
That was a good conversation. That was pretty good. High fives. Yeah, we did it. We did. You got sweaty hands again. They're sweaty. Yeah, they're just like they're clammy and sticky. They're sticky, moist, sticky. Kind of like I kind of had a suction. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, octopus vibe. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, for having not prepared really at all, other than going on a twenty-minute walk with my dogs. And whatever you did, you drove here and thought about it. Yeah. That's pretty good. Let's pat ourselves in the back a few more times. No. Yes. <laughs> but out of the news, um, I'll kick us off here. A little uh, pandemonium occurred in our YouTuber community. Uh, there's a small YouTuber. Uh, goes by the name of Sword and Steel. Uh, she has a partner. I'm not sure how often her partner is in the uh the channel and but when i say partner i don't mean like uh their life partner life partner just like they work together on the youtube channel um actually let's back up green stuff world owns owns the phrase color shifter as it relates to is it color shifter or color shift color shift i think it's color shift color shift all Uh, one word (laughs) as it relates to art products i'm sure if someone made a different product like a vehicle and called it color shift they couldn't well, yeah it's been a thing for generations right um so this yo- youtuber yoitober <laughs> yoitober <laughs> made a video reviewing vallejo's color shift product named the same thing was there was vallejo's one word as well i don't know see this is where it gets really i don't think I'm sure Green Stuff World has a leg to stand on is if they have the space. Well, they don't have a leg to stand on. We, yeah. They're they're the villains in this story. Right. Not, not entirely. Um, anyways, can't they own the, the rights to both? The one word and the two words? Well, they, they... I mean, they couldn't if the patent people were to go out there and realize that there are at least a half dozen existing art companies that already use that term and it is the same product maybe not for maybe it's for crafting maybe it's for jewelry making maybe it's for whatever yeah but they exist and they say they call it color shift they already call it color shift yeah but it's two words my impression and i I don't i didn't do enough research to know for sure green stuff's world what was one was one word color shift and so i didn't pick up on this detail yeah right and so i think that's what they tried to patent was one word color shift. And I, that's why I'm wondering if Vallejo's was their product was t- one word, two word. Anyway, they did a cease and desist or whatever. And Vallejo's had to change the name of their product. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this YouTuber Soren Steel made a review of the Vallejo color shift products and G- green stuff world. I want to call them GSW, but I say green stuff world thought the correct legal action was to, uh, tell, YouTube that they should take down the content and give the creator a copyright strike on their channel, um, which removes the video entirely. Um, they, they didn't even want to divert the AdSense revenue to Green Stuff World. They just wanted to remove the video. Mm-hmm. And obviously, this is not the right thing to go about, right? They need to issue a cease and desist to Vallejo to stop making the product. But the video itself... Um, Shouldn't have got tied up in this whole legal issue. Yeah. She Um, got a product that was called Vallejo Color Shift because that was prior. Her version of the paint was prior to the Vallejo changing the name. So she wasn't in the wrong. Right. No. It's public domain to, to write a, to give a review on something. Yeah. And with no malicious intent. Now I understand how Green Stuff World why they want at a base level why they wanted to do what they did and that is that if people say color shift paint oh that that color shift paint was crappy it didn't work oh what do you guys think of color shift paint it's crappy it doesn't work right okay if the vallejo one is the crappy one that doesn't work and the green stuff one world stuff is really good when somebody says color shift they think you're talking about the green stuff world you know where this happens in the hobby world with resin you know you know who ruined the face of resin Games Workshop. Games Workshop. Everyone's scared of resin now because of fine cast. Yeah. But resin done by literally any other vendor it's is amazing. totally fine. Yeah. I don't know what they did to mess it up, <laughs> but it's... 
whatever. Um, they just threw in leftover sprues into the <laughs> resin pot. I don't know. We don't know what to do with these. Just throw them in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So they're trying to protect the the product that they create, the name they create, the reputation it has. Yeah. Um, so when they, so when she does a review for Color Shift Paints, it, in theory, somebody could misinterpret that as all Color Shift Paints or Green Stuff World Paints. So the way that they went about it was so wrong. Yeah. And they to, got so much hate for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was about the worst possible PR situation that they could have had. Every single YouTuber picked it up and was like, I know specific YouTubers who went out of their way to email Green Stuff World saying, this is wrong. Re- undo it. Mm-hmm. Because... The way strikes work on a YouTube channel is you have a finite amount you can get until your channel is removed from the platform. Yeah. So getting your content like uh, like using a copyright strong, sorry, a song that has a copyright on it and getting the AdSense diverted to like UMG or something like that, Universal Music Group, is different than getting a strike on your channel. If, I think it's like if you get three, you're done. So like this is it's like a, it's like a huge thing you want to avoid at all costs right um i might be wrong about the, the specific numbers um but yeah that was that was really kind of an evil thing that i don't think they were fully understanding what exactly they were doing there's some language barriers going on here oh for sure like yeah. they it's ugh. so at first i thought that the way they explained it green stuff world was that they told youtube we own this thing go and take care of it for us and then like some automated system went and effed it up um, that's what I thought happened. But when you watch uh, this lady's video on Sword and Steel, you can see the the claim was manually applied. Mm-hmm. It wasn't automatically applied. So I, it makes me think that they at Green Stuff World went and applied it manually. But I will say this. They removed it. They apologized publicly. And honestly, here's the here's the other side of this story. This channel probably saw a huge kick oh, in yeah. popularity because of this scandal, as far yeah. as scandals go in the miniature painting <laughs> world. Um, so, in the end, Best I think thing that could have happened to her. Honestly, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but again, we're not saying that companies should go out copyright striking people for publicity because it's not. That wasn't so smart. It wasn't smart for them. No, there are people that are like actively boycotting the brand now because of that stunt, um, which sucks. You don't want that when you're trying to sell a product. No, no, it's it's still a a very niche community and a very tight knit one. Oh yeah, like word travels fast. <laughs> yeah, people loyalty is the thing here. So yeah, that video got like eighty thousand views on a channel where maybe the average viewership was like five thousand views. Oh, Which I didn't is, even think it was that much. But. It's it's huge. Yeah. She's a small YouTuber, so those numbers make sense totally. Yep. Um but yeah, that that was uh that was a blunder. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's next on the old news. I think we got some list. exciting news here. Some big news. Duncan Rhodes. Duncan Rhodes. <laughs> My guy. Duncan Rhodes. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> Um, so Duncan's leaving GW. What? Kick the door in. He's like, I'm Audi 5000. <laughs> Hops in his Subaru. And he's gone. Jets out. Wing, wing. Who saw that coming? Not me. Not me either. No. Right, like, and I thought we were getting trolled too because it was like right around Christmas. Yeah. And like this, suddenly this like Twitter message pops up from Duncan. And it's like, hey, I was hoping to leave this till after Boxing Day. At that point, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck language this is. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. And, but it's celebrated by England. Do they just punch each other? No. Do they put stuff in boxes? <laughs> I'm sure there's a history to it. We're dumb Americans. We don't know it. There'll be someone in the comment section that educates us. All right. Educate us on what boxing days. Anyway, I was like, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, I uh, wanted to like, you know, qualm the rumors before or whatever. Yes, I will be leaving Games Workshop. Whatever. Whoa. And I was like, what? That's weird. This is awkward right before Christmas, like randomly just on his own. Yep. In Twitter. Twitter. And... Come to find out it's real. Yeah. That he actually is leaving. Yep. The face of their YouTube channel. He's I- the face of Games Workshop. Let's be real clear here. There is no one person 
No, yeah, you're right. There is not there is not a single person who has a more of a a public uh, persona in that company than Duncan Rhodes. Yep, absolutely. Second closest is probably Darren Latham, and that's because kind of his own from his own accord. That's because of YouTube. Yes, that they and people well, the, uh, things. Right. I yeah. mean, obviously, he's got the clout to back it up. Yeah. And the years of experience yes. and all of the history within the company and yes. all of that. But he was not put in front of a camera, whether for photography or video, prior to his own accord in a major way. Yeah. He appeared in other things, but. Yeah, probably the interviews and stuff. But now they're trying to do this. What is this? James Workshop bullshit, too? I saw this. I haven't watched it. That video was. Yet. The, it was from like the, I think it started around the Christmas stuff. Isn't it goofy skits and stuff? Yeah, it's like, I'm James Workshop. You should ask for GW products in your stocking this year. Otherwise, you're a loser. Okay. That's exactly the I, the script. I just read it right now. I mean, I get the vibe from that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I'm thinking that started to happen of introducing James Workshop. Less than a month prior to this announcement. I believe it started in, it could have been late November. It was probably December. <clears throat> and I don't think that's coincidental. I think that they are trying to fill mm. this void prior to his departure. And yet, as you probably had noticed, he'd been spending less time in, in some of the Warhammer community videos recently anyway. They're folding him out. Yeah. So they probably gave his two-month notice. I don't know how they do things in other countries or whatever, but <laughs> in America, in America... America, you give a two month notice and then they two can months. you the next day. Two week. Two month? Two month. Oh, maybe it is two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> That's so far removed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tip okay. That in my company, typically if you um if you move internally, it's two months. That's why I thought that. Oh, okay. okay. So if you move to a different department or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, so I think games workshop is really underestimating how important Duncan and, and okay, this is if if he asked for something and they were like no, and he's like see ya, they fucked up. Yeah, but if he just left because he wanted something different, they couldn't do anything about that. So, has the details been revealed yet about where he's going? I I think I heard that he is going to the company that makes some historical game like Warlord or something like that. So, still within the miniature world. Oh yeah, still still within the miniature world. Not out of not out on his own. Yeah, in the tweet he's mentioned like I'm still gonna be doing my own personal hobby and painting things that are non GW stuff now and stuff like that. Um, but specifically where he's going to be working, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So the the specifics on that aren't as important to me as the fact that one. He's not going out on his own to start his own company, basically his own YouTube channels, all that kind of stuff, he which could he could do. He could crush on his own YouTube channel. Yes. Da Duncan, I always call him Darren. Duncan, if you're listening to this, you could make a living as a YouTuber with the notoriety that you've uh, gained on GW's thing, and that could be your living. Yes. Straight up. So knowing that that's not what he's doing and knowing that he is still within the gaming world, the miniature hobby. I thought you said it's gaping world. <laughs> I was just like, what? That's a different website. <laughs> that's that's not the website we're talking about. <laughs> um, that leads me to believe that GW didn't pony up and pay that man his money. Yeah, if he's going to another hobby thing. Yes. Yeah. This tells me he they just didn't pay him. I think it comes down to that. I'm sure I don't I don't know him. I don't know the history. Whatever. Sure. He is so ingrained in what they do that, like, he should probably be making three times whatever they were paying him because yeah. of what they what and it and they could do that and still be saving buttloads of money compared to what most companies, respectable companies in our world pay for marketing and PR. Yeah, they are yeah, he, getting he, by on peanuts. He is the marketing and PR. Because people watch the videos just because they're attached to him as a person. Yes. Yeah. And they don't, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily interested in paying YouTubers to do ads because they can almost do it, almost do it themselves. Yeah. I, didn't, so, think, I didn't think about that. I, I, 
I think there was something there where Duncan's finally like, okay, I'm, I'm still, worth I'm more still than making, fi- I'm still making fifty grand. Like this is ridiculous, and he should say that. Yeah. The problem is that GW sits back in their in their high chair and says, "Who else? Who else is coming for this throne, buddy? I'll pick him up. <laughs> I'll, I'll hire him for the Miniac channel. Right. I will pay you to do one mo- one video a month." And you will end up making half as much money. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> I will pay you in chicken tendies. I will overnight you mail can them. Live in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't worry about the litter box. Make sure you step over that. Yeah, and watch out for all those little pebbles on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like kale drops down here. <laughs> um, that's big. I'm curious to where this goes, and I'm curious to see if GW. How they're going to fill that void. The first vid he puts out as a non-GW employee will blow up. Well, Whether it's for a different company or it's on his own personal channel. If he makes a video called explaining why I left GW, <laughs> that video will get, I guarantee, over 200,000 views yeah. in the first week. Yeah. And more later on. I guarantee it. Um, so, Yeah. If anyone wants to pick up good old Duncan, you're you're guaranteed some fat views yes. right up front. Yep. So that I'm I'm curious to where this rabbit hole goes. I yeah. don't know. Me too. Me too. All, All right. right. All right. We did we have another one? Badger birthday sale. All right. So Badger airbrushes are airbrushes. American made. <laughs> made made America. America. By Americans. For Americans. Hell and other yeah. folks. Hell yeah, brother. That's right. That's right. Uh, so they make airbrushes. Yep. And they have and they talk like that while they make them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just a guy, and, and, <laughs> and like I just see like an assembly line with a steam press. Like, Done. He's just like, woo! <laughs> Done. <laughs> Give me a push. <laughs> I got another one. Um, I'm sure they're much smarter people than that. Yeah. Uh, Ken Badger seems like a gentleman. Ken Badger's a scary guy. He is a big grumpy dude. I was being nice, but truthfully, he scares the shit out of me. He scares the shit out of me too. <laughs> I th- I think he has my phone number. Um, we talked on the phone a few times, uh, but before I don't think he knows what I look like though. Because <laughs> he's like, because you know, like whenever I talk to him at Adepticon, he's he's always like stressed out at the con because he's like he always running around. walking around sweating. Yeah, because he's like delivering airbrushes to classes, picking them up, dealing with damaged crap, and he's just he's just he's just scary. Guy Completely out of product at his booth yeah. by day two <laughs> yeah, yeah he's just like, like God damn man like, i hate this place <laughs> yeah like, oh i'm sure i'm sure you hate that you made 50 grand this weekend <laughs> yeah i'm sure um so they have a couple sales a year i think and i thought I, it was just one is it just a birthday sale i don't know maybe it is probably just is probably is a birthday sale okay so this year is their 56th anniversary so they had a sale have a sale it's f- all of their airbrushes a fifty-six dollars. Mm-hmm. This is a winning strategy, by the way, because he only gets older. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it only goes up. Yeah, each year by one dollar. Yeah. So <clears throat> they have this like series of tests you need to take in order to get in on the sale. Oh yeah. Uh, you and need to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Right. right. One twenty-three. Yeah. <laughs> no. And you got to jiggle the handle three times. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to blow out your airbrush with. <laughs> Your tongue. And then you got to write on the wall, Ken Badger Eternal, <laughs> with your airbrush. Yeah. And then draw a bald eagle. <laughs> that breathes fire. Yeah, and it's pooping on um, in a water. water. <laughs> yeah. um, so if you do all those things, which I did, um, they will send you a super <laughs> secret email code. And that super secret email code uh, gets you to a page where you can order this stuff for the birthday sale for 20 days this was 20 days as of your birthday so the 6th so by january 26th i got the email thing and we're gonna put it in the show notes i don't know if i'm gonna get punched i can match her for doing this but if you want to buy an airbrush for 56 dollars, any of the airbrushes and you can buy more things if you want them as well just check out the link below and get an airbrush. Are you going to pick up any airbrushes? I haven't decided yet. I have until the 25th, 26th, something like that. Okay. It does say on there, like, um, it can take a long ass time to get them delivered. Like, up to six months, 
It says, oh. be patient. This could take up to six months. Wow. I'm like, okay. But they've got some... You saw there was one you liked. Was it the Renegade? The Renegade Chrome, Chrome. is... So, like, there's a few Badger airbrushes that are always talked about. That's the Patriot 105, the Sotar 2020, and t- to me, the the Chrome, the Renegade Chrome is one that's always talked about. We both have a Sotar. Yep. And that one works fine. I like, I like it. The problem is I don't have... A Sotar is a very detailed brush. Yeah, it has an incredibly tiny diameter... Um, Needle. Needle. And then the actual fill cup is super, super tiny. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm always like spilling stuff. Yes. <laughs> it's getting everywhere. Yeah. So I don't have like an everyday workhorse one other than the, like the cheap one I bought off of uh, Wish or, or what I get? Uh, I think I got it from eBay or Amazon. Anyway, it's like a cheap, ma- were they Masters? 20, 20, yeah. Masterson. Yeah. Or Mas- uh, No, no, you're Mas- right. Masters. That's Masters the, that's one. That's the wet palette. Yeah, yeah. And I got that one so I can like shoot whatever the hell I want through and I don't care if it breaks. Yeah, yeah. But that made me realize like it does have a big cup and a bigger needle. And it's like, man, I should really get a nice more workhorse one. Yeah. And so I originally was like, oh, maybe I should get a Patriot, you know, 105. And then I'm just like, oh, I heard they're not as good <laughs> as the Iwata Eclipse. Yeah. I mean, they're also cheaper. Like the HPCS is... 150 bucks yeah it might be more than that even but yeah probably could get it for that yeah and the the badger is like 70 dollars yeah 70 dollars with shipping to the u.s um i mean like normally it's like 70 or 80 dollars oh i thought it was a hundred i don't think so if you're getting it for a hundred dollars you're getting ripped off (laughs) okay okay um but yeah so it's like it's not half the price but it's close to half the price of the hpcs um but yeah my workhorse has been the hpcs for the last year year and a half so and i, I want the, i want a badger version that to me is as good as the hbcs you want to buy american i want american product i'm all american because i'm american so yeah so renegade what, chrome what's what is that one then what is it what's its niche the renegade chrome yeah i have no idea <laughs> i just heard it's good <laughs> i haven't looked into it it's just one that's talked about a lot i thought it when i was looking at the specs on their website from 1994 <laughs> i saw that it looks like it has the same 0.2 needle as the Sotar. Uh, so I'm like, well, well, <laughs> I don't want, I don't like to prime for 40 minutes because <laughs> <one minute. laughs> it doesn't get very wide. It gets like the maximum width is like th- maybe a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Yeah. Maybe not even. Uh, it's less than that. It's pretty freaking small. Yeah. I did a, when I was comparing airbrushes, I did a test. I was like, if I put a certain amount of white primer in a cup, how long, if I fully pull back on the needle, does it take to empty this thing? And the fastest was the, the Patriot 105. It just crushed it. <laughs> uh, it's like garden hose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, then the, I think the the Harder and Steamic Evolution and the HPCS were pretty close. And the Sotar, I didn't even finish. I was like, this is <laughs> taking forever. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it took a long time. It does. I end up dumping out so much paint with that thing, <laughs> even though it's a tiny little cup. Yeah. Because it just it it's shoots no, out one millidroplet. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very, very, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Um, it's not fast. Can I, can I blow your mind for, blow, a, mo- for a moment? Blow my mind. You know, when we say meat and potatoes, we don't say that anymore. We, I do. <laughs> yeah. Just not I, on the po- I, it just hadn't made the podcast <laughs> in the last couple of episodes. Did you know the attendees and French fries are, are meat, meat and potatoes? potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Right? Because I don't normally eat just meat and potatoes. I mean, I do, but not too frequently. But I eat We tendies. did a steakhouse. Oh, yeah, we did. We had meat and potatoes. Yeah. I think I even said meat and potatoes. And I might have not picked up on that. Our, <laughs> one of our wives looked at me like, are you special? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. Could have been both. Because I thought it was funny. I don't think you were paying attention. I wasn't proud. And so my audience was gone. <laughs> my audience of one was gone. And they're like, that wasn't funny. <laughs> you just said meat and potatoes and giggled. <laughs> I had the meat sweats by that point. Oh, yeah. My brain wasn't working. The meat fever was setting in. Oh, man. All right. So that's our, our newsy news for the day. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the end of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy you could hang out with us and chat about stuff. Well, you didn't do any chatting. We did all the chatting. 
You could chat with us. We just wouldn't hear you. Yeah, you could. You could have. You could just pause it, say your piece, and then start us up again. <laughs> or you can do what some of our patrons do if you join our Patreon campaign is that they watch it and then they pause it and then they send us notes through Patreon yeah. about parts that they're watching, yeah. which are often hilarious. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we respond. We respond and we chat with them. Yeah. So you can do that. Yeah. Another benefit to being a patron is you get access to an extended episode, uh, which is oftentimes 20 to 30 minutes longer. We uh, give critique to one of our patrons. We talk about new and exciting things we're struggling with and experimenting with in the miniature hobby world. And we also talk about favorite models that we've seen from other painters in the community. Yeah. You got that down. I am so good. Bah, bah, bah. So yeah, if you want extended podcasts, uh, you, you can do that. That's a great way to support us or buying merch. Like I'm wearing right here, the sweater. You can find a link in the description to both of these. Yeah. Things. You don't, you can't buy the Trevarian shirt. You can't though. buy Trav's shirt, although you should support Trevarian. Lovely man. Yeah, I did. I supported him. I bought his shirt. There you go. Um, oh, the other thing that's new on uh, Patreon is you get exclusive access to John's shitty vlog. <laughs> oh yeah, John posted a little vlog with a little camera. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing those. Really? Um, yeah, I'm cool. just gonna do them uh, maybe every, every couple weeks or something like that. And I don't know what I'll be doing in them, but that's why it's titled a shitty vlog to just, keep your expectations just low. Show Remus. Yeah, he's, he's Remus beautiful. is snoring is mostly what it's gonna be. <laughs> the videos of time lapse of him snoring. Yeah. So all right. So they can support us through there. They can hang out on Facebook. They can buy yeah. some merchy merch. They can subscribe on the YouTube channel. They yeah. can uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or if you listen to podcasts. Did you notice that after we brought up, like, people don't subscribe because they think this is part of the Miniac channel? Like, our sub numbers went way up. In Did the, they? Yeah. Nice. We went up, like, 500 people in, like, four days <laughs> because nice. people were like, oh, sorry. Like, no, we appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate that very, very much. Honestly, the views are more important than the subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to just, like, raw, like, earning AdSense dollars. Yes. Um, so don't feel bad that you weren't subscribed. It just makes our egos go up a little bit if you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. By one tick. <laughs> So that's it. We have a special episode coming to you in two weeks from today. Oh, yes. And uh, we hope to see you there and catch you on the flippity flop.